Established in 1891, North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University is one of 19 historically black colleges and universities with the distinction of being a land-grant institution. Land grants are a product of legislation introduced by Vermont Representative and Senator Justin Smith Morrill, who had a vision to make education available to all social classes, not just the wealthy and the affluent. Now the first Morrill Act, signed into the law in 1862 by President Abraham Lincoln, provided 30,000 acres of land, that's federal land, to each member of the congressional delegation to be sold with the proceeds being used to fund public colleges with a focus on agriculture and the mechanical arts. Following the Civil War, the act was extended to include states that once seceded from the Union, including North Carolina, which established what is now known as North Carolina State University. In the year 1890, Congress passed the Second Morrill Act, which stipulated that African Americans be included in the U.S. land-grant higher education system without discrimination, with many southern and border states unwilling to integrate their universities. Second land-grant institutions had to be established. How a and came into being is an interesting story. It was in 1890 when the Secretary of Interior wrote to the governor and indicated that provisions for colored students to attend land-grant institutions had to be made. Since North Carolina State already existed, the governor asked if some of the teachers could teach students at Shaw University to see if that would qualify. The answer to that question was no. And that's when the governor proposed to the General Assembly that it establish a land-grant institution for the colored race. After the governor's proposal, on March 9th, 1891, the North Carolinian General Assembly voted to appoint a board of trustees and gave them the authority to establish the Agricultural and Mechanical College for the Colored Race. The designated purpose was to, quote, teach agriculture and mechanical arts and such branches of learning as related thereto, not excluding academic and classical instruction, end quote. On March 3rd, 1892, the first Board of Trustees voted to make the college's home in Greensboro. Greensboro residents like DeWitt Clinton Benbow and Charles H. Moore gifted 14 acres of land and $11,000 to the college. Other cities including Durham and Mebane and Raleigh and Wilmington and Winston, now Winston-Salem, also made applications for the university. While a and had its humble beginning, the vision and hard work we call Aggie Pride fuel the earliest leaders and supporters. Pride is on display across every inch of our campus and thrives in the lives of all who call themselves Aggies. From the very beginning, this university's priority has been to educate students for the careers of tomorrow. Today, the principles are the same and we are working diligently every day to be better than yesterday. You know, a and spent the majority of the 20th century literally solidifying its relevance in the internationalized marketplace. From developing a 100-acre farm equipped with farm machinery and modern labor-saving devices to several name changes, the university changed with the times and the world around. A&T students learned vital leadership skills while fighting for civil rights and became leaders in their respective industries while the university grew in size with the acquisition of a 98-acre tract of land and Emanuel Lutheran College. It also grew in significance, becoming designated as a regional university, a constituent institution of the University of North Carolina system, and as it is now called, North Carolina Agricultural 
and Technical State University. Well, the campus is, has been here for 125 years, but we've made significant improvements to the facilities on this campus in the last 15 years to continue to attract the very best and brightest to come to the university. We have grown from 6,000 students to now less under 11,000 students uh, since 1999. And so we need to continue to provide the very best facilities for those students as they continue to come to the university. The first project that we've done has been the Aggie Village, which replaced Scott Hall, which is in fact four individual housing residence halls that house about 200 students each with control facilities. So that has helped to be able to attract the new student coming to the university. The new health center is designed to accommodate 10,000 students plus based upon our 2020 preeminent strategic plan. We are in the process of building our new student center, uh, which is 150,000 square feet uh, for a population that we anticipate to grow to 15,000 students in 2028. The student union project is $90 million with the total project cost, with the construction cost to do the building itself is about $61 million. A&T Preeminence 2020 was designed to position this university, faculty, staff, and students to be more competitive in the global marketplace. The plan is rooted in the university's vision to be recognized as a preeminent land-grant university and an institution of choice for some of the world's most high-achieving students, innovative faculty, and outstanding staff. a and Preeminence 2020 empowers students, faculty, staff, and administrators to extend the traditions of excellence beyond their individual experiences. I first joined the Aggie family as a freshman in 1970, eager to absorb all this great institution had to offer, and anxious to give back all I had to offer. In 1973, I married my high school sweetheart, the former DeVita Wagner, who was also an alumna. I spent the first 20 years of my career in higher education here at a and and in 2009, we returned as the Chancellor and First Lady. The university remains a significant part of my life and the lives of my family. I count it an honor and a privilege to use the leadership skills and visionary thinking I developed right here at a and to lead this university into preeminence. While the times, the faces, and some of the buildings may have changed, this university's commitment to preparing today's students to be tomorrow's innovative, solution-oriented, global leaders has not. Now with an enrollment of nearly 11,000 students and has ranked third in sponsored research funding for nine consecutive years within the University of North Carolina system. Our pride, our future, honors our great history as a land-grant university that produces change agents and global leaders for the careers of today and tomorrow in disciplines of science, technology, engineering, mathematics, business, the arts, and humanities. This year, we celebrate our more than 50,000 alumni of record, students, faculty, and staff, and 125 years of leadership, research, innovation, creative scholarship, and excellence. As one of America's most highly respected doctoral research, land-grant universities, the university's learner-centered community continues to develop and preserve intellectual capital for interdisciplinary learning, achievement, and community engagement. Aggies lead, Aggies achieve, Aggies do. We are proud. Our history is rich with achievement and tradition. Our university is a place where the dynamic and the visionary challenge the status quo. We share a vision of preeminence. Using our minds, our research, and our passion, we engage the community and create positive, lasting global change. We are better than yesterday, but never as good as tomorrow. And our excellence has no boundaries, because that's what Aggies do. <laughs>